You've made the choice to install some attractive, durable vinyl flooring in your home. A choice that can boost your home's value and will allow you to create a cohesive look in your spaces. Vinyl plank flooring is known for its versatility, durability, low cost, and comfort for walking on. You can easily install it over any rigid and level surface, including concrete, wood, or even one layer of existing hard flooring. To install ClickLock planks first, gather your tools. Vinyl cutters are the best choice to cut vinyl pieces, but you can also use a utility knife, jigsaw, or miter saw. Other tools you'll need include a measuring tape, a pencil, a straight edge, a rubber mallet, a tapping block, caulk, and a nail gun. Gather your safety gear. It's best to wear safety goggles, work gloves, and knee pads for this project. Step one, preparing your subfloor for installation. Your subfloor should be clean, rigid, level, and free of cracks. If the subfloor is unlevel, fix low spots with a self-leveling product and sand down high spots. Remove any carpeting or old vinyl flooring and temporarily remove the baseboards and molding. Once your subfloor and room edges are clear and level, you can begin measuring your flooring for installation. Step two, measuring for your vinyl installation. Try to install the vinyl parallel to the longest wall in the room. This will minimize the need for cutting in the long run. You'll still need to adjust the width of your last and maybe first row of planks, which means we've got to do some measuring. You'll start by measuring the width of the room, that is, the measurement that runs perpendicular to how you want your planks aligned. Write that number down. You need to allow a gap for your flooring to expand, so subtract one half to three fourths of an inch from your measurement. Write that number down as well. To determine how many rows of flooring you'll need, divide your measurement by the width of one of your planks. Write that number down too. This is the number of full width rows you'll be installing. For most rooms, this won't divide evenly, so you need to do a bit more math to find out how narrow your last row should be. You can figure out the width of your last row by calculating the width of all the other rows and subtracting that from the initial room measurement. To do that, take the number of rows you calculated a minute ago and round it down so it's a whole number. Multiply that number by the width of a single plank and you'll get the width of the area highlighted on your screen. Subtract that number from the measurement you took of the room and you'll get the width of your last row. Remember a final tip about measuring before we move on. If your last row is going to be less than half the width of one vinyl plank, you might want to trim from both sides of the room. That will keep any one row from being too narrow. To get the right measurements for this process, just add the width of your last row to the width of a full plank and divide that number by two. That will give you the width for both your first and last row, which will keep your floor looking even. Step three, preparing your doorways. Cut the door frame to allow the planks to slide easily beneath them. To make this kind of cut, first, take a plank of flooring and lay it finished side down next to the door's molding. Trace a guiding line along the surface of the molding with a pencil to show you where the cut should be. Use a jam saw to make the cut. Step four, installing your first row. Start by removing all the planks from their boxes and shuffling them together to make things look natural. Lay down the first plank, leaving the proper expansion gap between the edge and the wall. Install the second plank by holding it at an angle and inserting its groove edge into the first plank's tongue edge. Lower the second plank to snap the planks together. Keep retrieving new planks and snapping them into place until you have a complete row. When you get to the end, simply cut the last plank so that it falls an expansion gap's worth of space away from the wall. Step five, the second row and beyond. For the second row, use the same angle and snap method, attaching planks side by side to the planks in the first row. Plan to stagger the vertical seams of your planks, leaving at least six inches between the seams of adjacent rows. This strategy gives your floor a more natural appearance. Use this method to finish the entire room, finishing each row before you begin the next. When you've finished up, trim the border planks a bit more if you still need to achieve a proper expansion gap. Replace the baseboard and molding in the entire room, and finally, use caulk to go over the seams of the baseboard and molding, creating a finished look. If you follow these steps closely, you can successfully and simply install vinyl click lock flooring.